Okay, let's start this week's topic. Uh, we will be talking about risk management and why it is important for projects. How do you, how do we, we can, how can we manage risk in uh, project process, project management process? It's an important issue, but firstly, uh, I want to start with the defin definitions. What, uh, what does risk mean? So. Um, a risk is something uh, negative, right? Negative meaning. I mean, risk uh, somehow a probability, a likelihood of, of uh, evidence of an incident, sorry, uh, that that could happen during the project uh, time timeline, and that would affect you badly. I mean, and generally, these risks are uh, could be both uh, outside risk and internal risk, right? There are some risks that uh, carried by your project team, your business, your uh, team, your internal uh, characteristics of your team or of your business. And there are some risks outside of the company that you, not, that you cannot control, like economic risks, like uh, pandemic risks, uh, technical risks. These some kind of uh, these problems could occur during the project. So. Uh, what are some important key concepts here in terms of project management? First of all, you should ask the question of uh, what is the probability? What's likely to happen? Okay, and what is the impact? There are two. Uh, this, these are the two uh, main components of risk: the probability of that risk and the impact of that risk. Okay, um, this is important because um, probability means that what is the likelihood to, to such a risk could occur, right? Uh, come to the face. So uh, if it is too low, the probability is too low, I mean, uh, even if the impact of that risk is too uh, huge, you don't care about that risk that much. What kind of a, uh, probable risk that we mentioned, for example, I mean, no one uh, can talk about the, the volcano risk, right? A volcano uh, uh, erupting and uh, killing all of the uh, nature and uh, having a damage. I mean, it's a, it's had a huge impact. Maybe it's, it will kill your all business, all project. However, its probability is very low, and then you don't care about this. I mean, you don't have a uh, precaution to uh, this risk. I mean, you don't have a strategy for dealing with that risk. Okay, this is the probability. I mean, for uh, having an uh, earthquake, for example. I mean, earthquake is a very serious risk, right? Especially in Turkey. I mean, we are waiting for uh, an earthquake. But uh, what would, would, what is the probability of that earthquake first? And what's the probability of that earthquake will damage your facilities? So these are, uh, I mean, low probabilities, right? But with a high impact. But there are some other uh, risk factors, like, for example, today, we have a very huge probability of having a financial crisis, right? Economic uh, melting down. I mean, uh, losing the, the Turkish rise values and the inflation and all of the uh, unemployment. These are very huge probability uh, risks that we, that we can face in the next years. And what would be the impact on the company uh, then of that risk? Okay. I mean, if you have a financially powerful position, for example, if you have investors from uh, outside Turkey, like Europe, America, so they have a huge financial power, I mean, maybe it's not a very big problem for you. But if you have huge credits, I mean, if you have huge, a very vulnerable financial situation, I mean, it's a huge risk for you. So the first number one rule is risk is contingent. What does contingent mean? It depends on one project to another project. It depends on one business for another business. Some risk factors could be a risk for you, but could be an opportunity for another business, another project. Think about this pandemic process. I mean, pandemic is, is a risk, a very big risk, very big threat for many of the companies, but some of the companies actually enjoying the results of the this pandemic, right? Especially e-commerce companies. I mean, you can see, you, you always see, for example, triangular advertisements in everywhere. I mean, you just, get uh, sick of them, right? I mean, uh, boring, but they almost tripled uh, their businesses in this pandemic process. So 
sometimes this risk is from where you look. I mean, if you can uh, uh, turn it into an opportunity or it could be a huge damage for you. So it, 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 it would be a huge damage for you. I mean, you, you, you were, we are focusing today on the damage part, damage aspect, of, negative aspect of risk. So what can be done to minimize that <clears throat> risk? Can we decrease the probability, for example, of that risk? Or can we decrease the impact of that risk on our company? So uh, can I, uh, the risk is something uncertain that you don't know. So another question is, if there is any signal that you can uh, see that risk is upcoming, it will come in the near future or the, or the middle time future so that you can take precautions against it, okay? So what goals should you actively look for for seeing that risk is coming? Sometimes people don't see that, right? It's a big problem. I mean, uh, actually in environmental analysis like SWOT analysis, as you all know, I guess, we look up for the risks in the threat part, right? Uh, and the weaknesses part, I mean. You look at the internal and external conditions of your company, of your business or project team, and you see that there are some threats, there are some risks. So it means that you're actually defining them. You know what are these, and you can expect something like that. So you, you can get prepared to uh, face with these problems. And then uh, what would be the likely outcomes of that problems and our anticipated reaction. Okay? You should think about this. It's, it's better to think always. So risk management is something that we do before the risk happen, okay? Not after the risk happen. Uh, so we are planning now. We are at the planning phase of that project, risk management. Uh, and we list some risks, okay? There are some risks in the environment. We know them. We assign them some probability. What is the probability of seeing a financial crisis, for example? What is the probability of seeing a, a lockdown because of pandemic, right? So these kind of probabilities that we can list. And we also list some impacts. What would be the impact? Is it too bad? Is it too moderate or too low? Mm -hmm. When you can do that, you can have the also develop strategies to deal with risk uh, factors. Okay, let's look at that. So we can define risk as the art and science of identifying, analyzing and responding to risk factors. As I mentioned before, okay? risk factors are out there. You see them, you expect them to, to happen. Uh, some of them are having high probability, some of them having low probability. So you identify them, analyze them, respond them, and through the life of the project, time of the project, you um, actually try to control them. You try to uh, minimize their bad impacts, for example, or get rid of them. We will see. So project risk means, uh, is a specific definition of risk management. Risk management is a broader concept. It's done by businesses as well. And uh, it's actually a different, uh, how can I say, like some companies have functions, departments, uh, dealing with risk management. There are special uh, specialists who deal with risk management factors specifically. So, but in project uh, context, a project risk is something uncertain events or condition, okay? If it, 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 it occurs, it has a positive or negative effect on, on one or more project objectives, okay? What are these impacts on project objectives, like scope, schedule, cost, or quality? Okay? So, you can uh, also now, as you see here, we divide risks into different uh, titles, right? We divide them, we categorize them into different titles, like uh, a scope risk, okay? A scope risk means that, that uh, is, remember, a scope is the written document of uh, your project's details, right? Your project's uh, plan. And you could have a uh, problem with that. Maybe you uh, miss uh, designs, you have not have accurate calculations, for example, these kind of problems could occur, and we call them scope risks. What about schedule risks? I mean, there, are, there is a time pressure, for example. You are making a project to government, and government asks it in one year, 
And if you don't uh, accept, expect this, meet this time line, you will get faced with penalties, for example. So it's a schedule risk, right? Uncertain. If you cannot finish the project in one year, you will face some penalties. And it's very, very problematic. Right? What about cost risks? You calculate the average plan the cost uh, plan for a project, but then there are unexpected costs right? that we didn't uh, plan, that we didn't uh, think of. So it's a risk. And the quality risk, the end, end product, uh, specifically for technical product development projects uh, or technical projects. I mean, you uh, create something, but it has a low quality. So it's a huge risk. So also this definition also uh, su suggests that there, are, there could be positive effect of risks that's actually we call generally call it as opportunity okay risk has a negative meaning mostly generally because uh, it's it's, uh, it's recalls the uh, negative effect of these uncertain factors but if there's a positive effect we call it opportunity okay so a risk how do you calculate a risk so you just uh, multiply probability of that event and the consequence of that event, okay? The probable, uh, the, the impact of that event. You just multiply them. There are different calculations about this risk management, not important. The important thing is you should know that a risk is uh, constant of the probability of that event and the impact of the event. And that impact could be positive and negative, but we generally focus on the negative aspect. And we call this, if we focus on the positive aspect, we call generally opportunity. As you see um, here in the graph, we talk about certainty, uncertainty. Okay. Uncertainty means that you don't know what is coming to you. Okay. You are just waiting uh, and someone will come to you. Okay. You don't know who, who uh, is she or who is he. I mean, it's total uncertainty. You have no information. But then you have some information about his gender, his age, his uh, nation, his uh, birth of place, his height, his uh, et cetera, et cetera. So you collect some information, right? Then you have more relative uncertainty here, okay? But if you have the complete information, who is gonna come in to meet you? I mean, you just waiting for your friend, Eja, for example. You completely know that and there's no, Uncertainty, we are totally certain, right? So, uh, risk is high when there is uncertainty, is high, right? If you don't know who is coming, I mean, how can you develop some plans? I mean, who will be there? What his, he or she is like to do? I mean, what to do with them? How do you uh, talk with them? Does he know Turkish? Does he, he know English? So, who will be there? But when you know the complete information, when you know your friend who is coming, I mean, you know what to do, you have a plan. You have some uh, plan to do with him or her, right? Similarly, in projects, I mean, uh, the amount of risk actually depends on that. How much information do you have on the risk factors? Okay? If you have a complete information, actually, it's not possible. Generally, no one can have a complete information about the environmental factors. If there were complete information, I mean, uh, the strategic management plans were unnecessary, right? If there were complete information, everyone knows, would know what they need to do. However, some companies are uh, making good decisions, some companies are making bad decisions. This is because there is no complete information, there is no total certainty. There are relative uncertainties, and some companies are uh, actually uh, forecasting the future better than the others, right? And some companies are forecasting bad. And these would be unsuccessful, others would be successful. Okay? Again, let me repeat that is an important thing. If there is complete information on the environment, okay, we don't need any strategies, we don't need any decision making processes, plannings, this kind of strategic thinking, because everything is clear. Everyone knows what is why, what is there, what is the risks, what is the environmental conditions so rationally all, all companies are doing the same thing to uh, be successful but generally the uh, uncertainty rate is high so this is the 
uh, project lifespan. And as you see here, there are the planning phase and the product producing phase. I mean, it's the planning phase of the project where you conceive the, and develop the project plan. And then you go to executing and finishing part of it. Okay, for this. So as you see here, when, when you uh, begin planning the project, the opportunity and risk is high at the highest level because there is more, more uncertainty. You don't know anything about the project. But by the time you are collecting some information, right? And when you start the project, actually you face with the realities. So at the end of the project, when you finish it, there is no risk, there is no opportunity. You just finish the uh, project, right? So the opportunity and risk is decreasing by time, okay? Second important is, is the combined risk impact. Okay, risk is out there, opportunity is out there, but uh, the impact of, on you is low when you uh, plan the project because you don't face them yet. You don't face the, the, the risks yet. But the highest impact of the, the risk would occur in the production phase, right? When you execute and finish the project. This is the part of it because uh, this is where you most face with these uh, environmental factors and you need to solve the problems, right? And the amount at stake means that the money that you spend uh, on uh, the project, right? Or for that risk, the money that you lose. So it's also increasing uh, because you need to solve the risk problem. So there are four stages that we can mention about risk management. First of all, first of it is identification of the risk. What is the risk? What is the probability and the consequences? The second one, analyzing them. And then we will talk about the risk mitigation settings. What does that mitigation mean? We will come to that and then control it. So the type of risks, first of all, identifying the risks. There could be financial risks. There could be technical, commercial, execution, and contractual risks, right? I mean, it's endless. So many uh, types of risks that you can face while you are uh, managing your project, right? Absenteeism of the project members. Resignation of some partners. They just leave you on the middle of the way. Staff pull the day. You have a very high skilled employee in your project team, but his functional manager called him back. Okay, I want him, I need him. Time overruns, schedule risks, we mentioned about that. Uh, you don't have skilled uh, employees, it's a risk, right? Ineffective training of your employees. Specifications are incomplete about a technical project, for example. And the uh, uh, consumer customer change rate orders, for example. You uh, produce some products for a, for a customer. Uh, you invest in that, you regularly produce that, but they are changing it, okay? So you need to uh, redesign all the production facilities for it. So as you see here, uh, many examples of the risks, but there are many more that you can name. How can identify these risks? Actually, many uh, people come together and they brainstorm in their project team. Okay, I ask your opinion about that. What would be the risks and how do you uh, give a product for that? How much a probable to face a pandemic lockdown, for example? I'm asking to you guys, and you're coming to a common idea, coming conclusion. So these kind of things could be very uh, uh, popular in brainstorming okay? to identify risks. You can take the opinion of some experts. If you, for example, uh, develop something technical, something that you need engineering, uh, engineering specialties, I mean, you can ask some opinion to them, some experts that could be the risks of that production. And your experience actually is very important in that. If you are doing a similar project, if you have done that before, you know what kind of problems that you will face. It's very valuable. So experience is very valuable, right? If you, for example, second time doing some such a project, you know where were the problems, so you will be moving on. Uh, wisely. And multiple ass assessments, uh, team based assessments. Uh, it's also uh, 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 you assess the team risk factors, I mean, 
you ask the team, okay, uh, multiple assessments. Let me look at that. I don't remember what, what that was. I'm sorry. Anyway, so this breakdown structure, we uh, talk about this. There could be a, external uh, risks, right? Internal risks. So external risks could be, for example, market risks, environmental impact risks like pollution, community protests, or market risks like customer acceptance, profit potential. These are external risks. And internal risks like technical and organizational risks that you can mention. So as you, we have done work breakdown structures, we could also done develop risk breakdown structures to manage risk in a better way. When you do it more detailed, you could develop detailed strategies, right? And for example, if you just say, don't see the level two and level three, there are external risks for that project. So what would be that risk, right? And then I need some details. There are some market risks. Okay, so what kind of market risks? I mean, there are trillions of risks in the market, right? So you should def define them uh, as uh, detailed as possible. So risk impact matrix is uh, something that we mentioned uh, more and more. Let me do it again. Likelihood of that risk and the consequences of that risk, okay? If your likelihood is high, consequences is high, it's a problematic risk, okay, here. If the likelihood is low and the consequences are low, you don't care about that risk. You don't need to do anything. But there are some risks in between. So as you see here, you can categorize some risks like uh, higher than anticipated operating expenses, like cost risk, right? Establishing conflicting standards uh, and potential unachievable project requirements. And construction cost and schedule impact is treated delivering a sustainable building. These kind of things that you can list tons of them. And you need to write a likelihood here and the impact of it, okay? And the litig litigation, uh, the legal aspect of it, they added, and responsible parties here. So there are project risk scoring uh, calculations, but I don't want to um, introduce that for you because there are many simple models and you don't need to do them, actually. Don't worry about them. But uh, don't uh, forget that the, the two uh, components are here, probability okay, and the consequence, okay, likelihood and the impact. These are the two important things about calculating the risk. It's very important. So you just somehow make some mathematical calculation. It's not a uh, function that is true, the, the ultimate function, right? It's just a mathematical calculation. I mean, you can just uh, multiply them and divide the, two, divide the two to find that number. I mean, it's not important. But there are some more say, complicated uh, calculations like that. What about some mitigation strategies? Come to that point. This is more important. I mean, here is your project. You have come to an edge and you have seen some problems. I mean, you could avoid the risk, right? You could mitigate the risk. You solve the problem somehow. You could transfer that risk to another company, another insurance company, or you accept that risk and go down. So let's look at them a little bit. So avoiding is the best thing that you avoid. But if you cannot avoid, uh, it would hurt your project, right? So um, uh, sometimes it could be an option. I mean, for example, uh, you want to uh, build a uh, Build a building, okay, uh, in, a, in in some place, but you see, you know that it's the uh, land here is not actually good. I mean, there is a risk of, uh, let's say, earthquake, or <clears throat> the land is not that solid, is not that good. So you just avoid that place and change the uh, geography of your and change the location of your. Uh, building, right? You avoid that problem, avoid that risk. You just um, seek for more uh, certain, uh, more less risky places to look for it. Or you can mitigate it. Mitigate is, means that taking some sort of action so that causes it to do as little damage to your project as possible. You, you decrease the negative impacts of the risk. Or you could transfer that risk by making ins insurances, right? Actually, we do that, that, that in, for example, 
our uh, traffic, right? We make Costco. I mean, do you have cars? I don't know. Do you have a driving license and do drive? Do you drive, guys? No. No, you don't have. No. Okay. Hopefully, you will have a car in the future. So, uh, when you uh, buy a car, you make some, uh, you uh, pay some insurance as well, right? If there is any uh, traffic uh, accidents, uh, Allah Kurusun, they will pay the money, right? So, you just actually give transfer that risk to another company by making insurance. You pay some amount of money, of course, but you don't think about that. But if there will be this kind of problem. So, in a project, you could also do that. Sometimes you can, you should accept that risk, but uh, there is, it doesn't mean that it should not mean that you, you, there is nothing that you can do, right? I mean, you take the risk, you take the consequences, I mean, you accept the consequences, financial consequences of it, or you extend a deadline, for example, or you uh, find a new uh, project number. So these are problematic issues, but sometimes you just have to face with that. These are what that we call the accept minimize share transfer. Um, contingency reserves, uh, that, that is another strategy that you can do. You can, you, you can uh, dedicate some amount of, amount of money uh, in case of that you face with risk during the project. So that risk, for example. And uh, what about controlling the risk, okay? Who will control the risk? Uh, so what would be controlled, when, why, and how? So here, actually, uh, this is done. Uh, documentation, it's documentation. And we are just trying to codify the risks and try to codify the responses and how do you manage that risk. Now it's, these are the... Things I want to mention another thing also here. Let me share another. Uh, here's my Okay, I want to show you that how can, how can you work with its probability and impacting, okay, in the uh, project man risk management. So probability, as, as we said, the likelihood that the potential problem will occur and the impact is the seriousness of severity of that potential problem. So you actually calculation, make a calculation here and create a priority. I mean, you, here the formula is just uh, adding them and dividing them too, but there are different calculations, as I showed you in the uh, other slide. No important, I mean, um, there are different perspectives. There are more calculate, uh, complex uh, calculations, but the important thing here is just to give a priority here. Okay, the mathematics does not much matter, but here is the easiest way to uh, sum them and divide them too, okay? So first of all, you need to decide which is likelihood your uh, risk factor has okay for example if it's very low you just give a score of 20 yeah. if it is low unlike Turkey, you give it 40 medium 60 high 80 and very high is 100 okay this is the actually probability score that you give for a risk factor and then you uh, score the, the impact of that risk right from very low to very high like giving the scores again uh, like that. If there is insignificant impact, you give them 20. If it's low, you minor impact, it's 40. So this kind of a uh, risk impact table that you can develop. Okay? And here, actually, you give the priority score, priority rating, and 
You can also color this, not necessarily, but you can provide colors. And now, as you hear, there are some, uh, see, there are some risk IDs. You list your risks, okay? You read, write down your risks here, and you just uh, write the likelihood and the impact of the uh, risk as well. Then you calculate the priority of that risk, okay? As you see here, likelihood plus impact divided by two, you come up with some, some priorities and you give them the rate of medium, high, low, very high or medium. So when you see at uh, look at that risk uh, priority table, you can now, uh, now see that which risks are more important for you, which is that you need to take some precautions against, right? For example, 2.2 is a very high. It's very important one. You should really focus on that. This likelihood is very high. The impact is very high, so you need to somehow solve this risk problem. Okay, but here, as you see, 2.1 is low. You don't need to just much worry about that. I mean, you can develop some strategies against it, but it's not much probable to happen. You just uh, don't need to give it a priority. Likewise, I mean, the, each of the project uh, risk factors that you can uh, talk about is uh, develop some strategies about that. For example, rating is very high, 2-2. Two, two. What about that? Preventive actions. How, how can preventive actions that we can take? Clearly identify, identify the expected business benefits, project sponsor, contingent actions, measure the actual business benefits issued by the project, like this. So, I mean, uh, actually you uh, also need to develop some uh, plans, develop some actions, activities against these projects, okay? Yes, this is uh, it for me today. Any questions that you want to ask? I don't have. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, by the way, uh, I want to show you something more if I can find the document. In your project plans, uh, I would ask you to uh, identify your risks and uh, give them a priority. Okay. So, uh, let me find that to show you. Anyway, I couldn't find it, but uh, I want to. I will want uh, ask you to prepare top ten risks for your project plans, guys. Okay. And uh, you need to think about your project's uh, potential risks and give them a priority, okay? So uh, the thing is that you need to do is just look at this uh, probability. Oh, I, I find it. Okay. Let me show it to you. This would be the outline of your paper that you need to submit at the end of the uh, semester. So top 10 risks. At the list of 10, the highest risk to the project success, including the probability of their occurrence, level of impact, and risk description of mitigation strategy. So you need to describe the risk first. You need to give a probability of it uh, from 100 out of 100. You should give an impact factor from 1 to 5. And you need to uh, tell us what will be your solution if you face with that risk factor. Okay? So uh, you will uh, prepare this. In, at uh, your project plans. Okay. By the way, please uh, try to develop some project idea. Okay. Any idea that you can mention here, because you will need to write this report to me. So here you see the uh, general information part, and then problem uh, assumptions of the project, project description, 
product scope, project plan summary, objectives, goals, right? Critical milestones, I mean, you will uh, see about this in the next picture, and then financial summary of that project. So um, these are the issues that I wanted to talk to you today. Okay, thank you. If you don't have any questions, we can finish. Thank you, sir. Okay, see you next week.